Hi guys, this is Andy Morgan from Total Therapy Birmingham, once more back in my car. Um, it's Beaver's Night and here I am doing my recording for tomorrow. Um, so the last video went on to talk about alternative uh, therapies, other therapies. Now I, I, I downplayed them a bit in the last video and I didn't mean to. I called them small scale therapies. Um, things like sound healing, crystal therapy, colour therapy, and changing your food. But actually, those are the ones that can have uh, a huge impact um, because they tie into so many things at once. Start with colour therapy. It's simply down to the colours of the clothes that you choose. Um, and colour therapy relates to chakra therapy. And in that, you can look at the colours that you tend to wear. Um, now, those are one of two things. Those are either your strengths or they're your weaknesses. So you may find uh, a lovely example. An old friend of mine um, had had a, had a tough time, had a lot going on, had some tough decisions to make. And she was, doing, she was running a charity day and I was a therapist there. And she came in wearing this beautiful yellow gold scarf. And I, I sat and chatted to her and I asked her how her day was. I asked her whether she'd had trouble getting going, whether, uh, whether she'd, she'd struggled to get some momentum today. And she, she looked at me and laughed. She, she didn't know colour therapy that, that well. She said, how did you know? I said, you're wearing it. You're wearing willpower, you're, rein you're reinforcing yourself with willpower with the scarf that you've chosen. And it may be, it may be subtle colours, um, but it may be big and bold. It may be a, a, a bracelet or a necklace you like to wear, or earrings. Um, it may be you have, when you're feeling good, you wear a couple of outfits, and when you're feeling low, you wear something else. And yes, they're cuddly, and yes, they might have connections with, with being comfortable. But I bet you they're a specific colour. Um, and that one, that will, will, will vary. I mean, I have mine. I, I've always worn blue, and blue has always been my colour. No, no surprises that blue is the colour of the voice and of the throat, and of talking, self-expression. Um, more recently. Uh, I started to work on my issues and red came out. I started, I had a, a bright red hoodie, you've seen it in some other videos. That was one of the first and most colourful things that I wore. Then came my uh, orange polo shirt, and I'm talking Lamborghini orange polo shirt, which I'd never would have worn before. I never would have bold, worn such bold, bright colours, but I do now. Um, yellow is still my um, Achilles heel. For some reason, there's still something there I'm working on. But chakra-wise, red is the base, orange is sacral, yellow is sacral is solar plexus, green is heart, blue is throat, purple is third eye, and indigo or white, depending on the school that you follow, is is crown. Um, so colour therapy has a has a huge factor. So it can be the clothes that you wear. Um, the colours that you surround yourself with. Uh, maybe you have a colour changing light in your room, that will help and it will affect your mood. Colour therapy also ties into your food. Now you have nutritional value, you also have your colour value and if you look into Chinese medicine you also have the energy value. Um, so are they heating or cooling foods? Are they pungent foods? And look into herbalism and colour therapy and colour wheels and herbal wheels for, for the foods you eat. Very, very valuable um, for, for affecting your internal energies. And again, you may have foods that you're particularly drawn to or foods that you're averse to, and they will chop and change depending on where your deficiencies are. Now, the reason I mention food specifically is we know this inherently, we do this inherently. But the only time it really stands out is in pregnant women. Now, a lot of people will be dismissed for thinking, oh, I quite fancy having tomatoes today. 
and they'll dismiss it because they don't necessarily understand why. They won't give us themselves the 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 credit that that's what their body wants. Um, so you may have blood issues or blood deficiency issues or be tired. You may be fencing beetroot or blueberries. Um, all lovely colours for, for for blood and for, for, for that energetic level. But when we're pregnant, we finally listen to our bodies and we listen truthfully. And our body is deficient in something and we get the signals going, I need this for the good of myself and more for the point for the good of my baby. And we listen. And God forbid anyone who doesn't listen to a pregnant woman who wants that food. And it's because that is something that they need. My, my own wife, um, uh, pregnant with our son, was deficient in what we can only imagine is potassium. And she ate bananas. She ate a lot of bananas. And it's one day she just woke up and she was sick of bananas. She didn't want to see another banana. Now you could argue that's because she'd eaten a lot of bananas, but that hadn't stopped her yesterday or the day before or the day before. It's because her system had reached the levels that it needed. For other people, iron, so red meat, Guinness. Um, the, the joke that Guinness is recommended uh, or was drunk by pregnant women. Guinness is good in iron. It's low in carbs, good in iron. Uh, it's low in, relatively low in sugars for a beer. Um, so it does actually have health benefits, believe it or not. Uh, red meat. I've even heard of vegetarians who have craved meat because they haven't been able to get the the protein or the nutrients or the iron as well from their normal diet so they've just given in for the good of their babies and had meat they've gone back to 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 vegetarianism once once the baby's born or once they feel that they need to but they have uh you make up your own mind whether they're right or wrong but they have changed the way they eat for the health of their baby and for the health of themselves but most of the time we don't listen. We don't pay attention. So next time you are feeling peckish, next time you're about to make your dinner, don't ask yourself what you got in the fridge. Don't ask yourself what you had yesterday. Ask yourself, what do I want to eat? And or just put your hand in the fridge and see what you pick out. So don't don't even think. Just open the fridge door and pick out this. Pick out. Pick out. Pick out. Pick out. And. Uh, or if, yeah, if you ask yourself intuitively, close your eyes, what meal do I really fancy? What would be the best meal that I fancy right now? And something will flash into your head. And if you ask yourself, double check, ask, ask your heart, ask your mind, ask your intuition, and ask your gut. Your gut, not your stomach. Your gut feeling. And if it rings true, have it. I bet you'll feel better for it. I guarantee you'll, ha you'll have some level of improvement. You go, I needed that. Not, I wanted that, or that was tasty. I needed that. The, listen to the words that come out of your mouth as well. So food is a wonderful thing. And the more you start to appreciate that, the more you realise, the more you steer away from foods that are unhealthy and bad for you. And the more you steer towards foods that are inherently good for you. Because you're listening to your body, and your body doesn't want crap. Your body, most of the time, your, your body wants things that will help it build, help it repair. Um, so yeah, that, that's the there you go, challenge for the day. We did we, we haven't done challenges, but pick one. Um, colours or food. And listen, why do I want this? What do I want this about? Read up on it. Um, let's see what comes out. Uh, crystal therapy. Crystal therapy uh, is a lovely one. It ties into colour therapy with the, the colours of the crystals match the chakra again. But there is a, a slightly deeper resonance factor. Ah, they're all about resonance. They're all about the resonance of the colour, the resonance of the food, the resonance of the crystal. Um, being an acoustician, no surprise I'm a big fan on that one, but they're all about the frequency that those items emit. And that'll be a frequency that we are weak in. That'll be a frequency that we need to help us heal and help us get better. So crystal therapy ties into colour therapy and sound therapy. Um, sound therapy relating to uh, uh, into music therapy or just listening to the music on 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 the CD. Um, 
you may find you're drawn to a certain type of music or a, in a certain key for those who are more musically minded that actually notice the key um, or by a certain artist or with a certain uh, I was going to say je ne sais quoi but I don't know what um, with a certain theme to the music that's possibly something that you are lacking or boosting something that you just need to boost so all of those tie in all of those tie in and all of those as with the food trust your instincts if, if music comes on just let it flow if you fancy buying crystals or you're picking up crystals don't think about what you need just go in and see what you grab you walk around the shop and you'll find yourself on at least one occasion you'll find yourself holding a crystal that you don't even remember picking up and you'll, you'll carry on browsing through the shop and you'll look back and you're still holding this crystal that's probably the one you need that's probably the one that's most value, valuable and relevant to, to what, you're, what you're working on buy it, take it home do I look at my crystals every day? No. Do I wear or carry crystals every day? No. Because I don't need them every day. Do I have a whole lot of crystals? Yes. Because I've picked them up and collected them. Um, have I given away crystals? Have, have other people gained my crystals from me? Yes. Because they needed them more than me. Or I didn't need them anymore. Um, a crystal is, is not yours to own. A crystal is a thing. Um, we, we have no right to anything in our life. Um, so with crystals, much as it's pained me on a couple of occasions when people have taken some of the most beautiful crystals I've seen, they needed it. I didn't. I just wanted it. I just wanted to keep hold of it because it was mine. But it was never mine. And they needed it, they wanted it, and they benefited from it. And I've heard back from them on a couple of occasions that they've benefited from it. So, intuitive. Trust your intuition in whatever you do, in food, in colour, in crystals, in habits, in hobbies, in where you go, in who you talk to, in, hobby, in, in the activities that you do. And enjoy yourself throughout everything else. Enjoy yourself. If you're not having fun, what's the point? Okay. I'll leave that I'll leave you with that. Send me a comment. I'd love to hear some comments about what people pick up on or what people change as a result of this one. Because as I say, this one seems very simple, but it comes about in life so so often. So uh, yeah, daily, every time you change your clothes, every time you eat, um, every direction you turn might change from tomorrow from watching this video um, until then I will see you very soon I've been Andy Morgan from Total Therapy Birmingham if you like the video hit like hit subscribe and I will see you very soon